Diary of a Future President is a show that had its first season around January of 2020, and here it is, season 2. Disney Plus decided to drop it all at once, and the interesting thing about that is that it wasn't the original plan at all. A few weeks back, and yeah, you just have to take my word for it because I can't show it to you, it has been changed. All the episodes were scheduled to release one week at a time, but now it isn't. What that says to me is, Disney is probably not that confident in this show anymore, at least they expect to lose viewers over time if they're releasing it all at, all at once, all the 10 episodes, on such a short notice, changing it all to just dumping it all at once. I haven't seen that before in Disney+. Plus. But okay, I will separate my thoughts in a non-spoiler and the spoiler section, and of course there's a timestamp in the description. There's just a few things that were in the show I really want to be specific about. Hi fellow Disney Plus watchers, this is Thoughts After a Disney Plus Watch, where we review everything new Disney Plus coming out, and I'm glad you are watching. This is a channel that's specifically about movies, shows, and all that's Disney Plus original stuff. This show is not made for people like me. It's a teen drama D series with a lot of stuff in it that really connect with and relate to girls. Well, not only girls, everyone's invited to the party here, I just really want to make sure to preface that this is not made with someone like me in mind. So Diary of a Future President Season 2 begins not really where the first season ended, but a little bit later after the summer break, and the main character Elena has to deal with a lot of changes. Her best friend is suddenly walking around with a boyfriend all the time, the mean girl Melissa is suddenly extremely nice, and... Yeah, Elena's world is changing. In the meantime, her brother Bobby still struggles with his sexuality, and worst of all, because he's a freshman high schooler, there's no place for him at the tennis club, and he struggles to fill the void with other hobbies and other things to, to put his mind to. Also in the meantime, Gabriella and Sam make the decision to go and live together, to have Sam move in. Well, actually, Camelia makes the decision for them, because she can cut through the bullshit. <laughs> Gabby and Sam were practically living together already, so they decide, well, Camilla's right, so another big change for the Canero Reed family. After this all gets established in the first episode, and I won't talk about any more specifics yet, the show starts to explore the most well-known of drama series' themes, growing up, dealing with change, accepting who you are, all those perks. And the character that is best at selling these struggles is absolutely Gabriela Canero Reed, played by Selena's Leva. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not really sure. But she's a delight, and has really great chemistry with probably a little bit too perfect of a boyfriend, Sam. I will say Gabby is the character that is the most gripping and absolutely the character that carries the most weight. Her struggles are real struggles and this actress sells it. And to be honest, that is rare within the show. Cause, and I'm going to jump a little back and forth between the positives and the negatives here. This show is doing a really bad, bad job at holding tension and letting a conflict play out. What do I mean? Well, and this is exactly why I think the first season is still a little bit better than the second. Whenever two members of the Canero Reed family are having a fight over whatever it is, like Elena wanting more space for herself and refusing to share every little thing about her life with her mother, instead of making that a big deal, really putting mother and daughter head to head, instead, the very next scene they both apologize to each other and filling each other in completely about their feelings and just there's never any subtext within the lines, never any escalation, this show refuses to let us feel uncomfortable about something. The first season was pretty good compared to this one actually. There's also an episode within this season where, and I won't be too specific, but where Gabriella's mother returns and just shakes up the family. Family, puts everyone head to head and for a few scenes I was like wow what kind of ramifications will this have? This kind of works but nope they actually completely retcon and change the whole character around to have a feel good ending to the episode and there's never a bittersweet ending right? No the writers of the show are committed to make it as candy sweet as they can make it so they actually retcon a whole character to get there. Kind of same thing with Melissa who is now a completely sweet and lovely and kind character. For what reason? Like if you got that reference in the first season, conflicts could last way longer, over multiple episodes or almost a whole season. Like for example, Elena and Jessica having beef over the fact that she found new friends or popular friends. That whole arc in season 1 goes on for almost the whole season and their friendship is in a really bad place for most of the run. So when they finally reconnect, it's satisfying. Another good example of how season 1 just holds on to tension a little bit longer is how Gabby has a really hard time letting go of her old husband Robert and it is a big obstacle for the relationship between her and Sam through the entire season. This season is just saying, forget it. We want to touch on this, on this, on this, and on growing pains, on parents seeing their kids grow up, all those really basic but very human themes. The show touches on them, but then let's go immediately. And I can hear you saying already, you sure you're treating this show fairly? This is a feel-good show, right? A feel-good show for teens to find some stuff in it that they can connect with. It's not a full drama show. It's more of a light Disney show with some comedy. I get that, but I'm sorry. 
There's also almost no comedy within this show. It seems like this season, and again, I thought the first season was actually pretty decent because it built up to stuff. This season just drops stuff every episode or every two episodes. So it's not a drama series. There's no time to have drama because every character is already making apologies and hugging it out. And I think I laughed out loud once during the entire five hour run. And there's maybe two comedic moments every episode I would estimate. Overall, Gabriella and Sam are the best characters. These actors sell their roles and they have great chemistry and this season touches on some very relatable stuff oh and by the way bobby or robertico is pretty good as the insecure teenager trying to deal with his feelings for boys it was drawn out through the season and it delivered at the end so i thought his character was kind of sweet it was decent and the main character elena is really unlikable and an obnoxiously activistic character that just works on your nerves but she was actually a little bit more bearable this season compared to season one because she does kind of have an arc growing from a really, 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 really selfish character into a selfless person that cares more about others than herself. That's in there. But the way this character is portrayed in her overly theatrical way of talking, like, I'm going to win this Orange Bay Student Council or whatever. It's just, just uh, I'm really bad at impersonations, but it's still really hard to look at for me. But I gotta say, she's a little bit better here compared to season one. But man, this season calls itself a comedy drama and fails at both. In my honest opinion and I know I prefaced this review with the warning this series is probably not made for me but can't we expect a little more from a drama series than every character never holding a grudge and just letting almost every single conflict de-escalate this is not how to write drama in my opinion by the way I am not a writer but I did take writing lessons for a few years writing for theater and drama and this season just doesn't care about all those well not rules but tools to keep people engaged and write out drama this show is kind of an example of what to avoid when writing characters, so that's pretty Take that how you please. I'm also going to talk about some social commentary and political stuff that was present in this show and I thought it was kind of interesting. Still, they could have done way more with that considering this is a show about a future president. But before you may leave, there is some good political commentary in this season, so do stick around for it if you have seen this whole season or you do not care about spoilers, of course. So, spoilers ahead. Ready? Great, that was your final warning. I know I have been pretty negative so far, but let's touch on some things that are good about the show. The final episode did have some good things to say about what it means to have a true democracy and it showed a very necessary reform that if you would ask me it's pretty important the coming years in today's world. I appreciated that Elena, after her whole arc of growing more and more selfless, goes on stage and uses all her time to speak to let the students themselves speak. And this is exactly what our world needs, true democracy. Instead of profiling yourself and trying to convince everybody you should be a leader, be a leader, you know? What I also appreciated was a bit of commentary on what it can mean to be a politician. So in episode 7, when Elena and Bobby are throwing a party, Elena actually goes after this girl from whom she wants information on how she can get the first grade lockers back and that girl is just like yeah yeah I can fix that for you one condition I just want you to fix a date with your brother you do job for me I do job for you welcome to the mafia uh, all jokes aside Elena struggling with this more dirty work she has to do to reach her political goals I thought it was kind of interesting the show touched on that and thematically her talking to all of her followers saying bad things about her mother that whole storyline is also connected to that because it shows that sensation and drama sell take notes writers room please write better drama here which is another thing that helped politicians and public figures in general get to big positions within you know supreme court big companies all that kind of stuff there are plenty of little things themes or characters i can point to of whom or which i can say yeah it's pretty well done but overall man this show is lazy this is writing at minimal effort if you ask me nothing wrong with a feel-good show but you can't have feel-good moments without the painful awkward and uncomfortable ones and those are few and far between. Overall, I address this isn't my show, but still, didn't enjoy this. I'm thinking about wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm curious, what did you think of this show overall? Did you like the first season better or the second? I'm curious. Be sure to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the idea of discussing Disney Plus content with us, that red button looks familiar, right? I will be back this wetness day with what if Turner and Hooch, monsters at work, all those Disney Plus stuff, so be sure to be back for that. Did you like this video? Then be sure to consider giving that a click. Thanks for now. Have a wonderful day and see ya.